On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about allographs after ACL reconstruction and some of the things we do different. Do we go faster, slower? How do we progress them over time compared to an autograph? The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back everybody to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. We're up at Champion PT and Performance. Dan Pope, Mike Scaduto, Lenny McCrina here on this episode. We miss you Dave Tilly. Wait, he's still here. He's, he's been just out on vacation. He's just on vacation. He's been out for a while. Weeks. Weeks. <laughs> it's been like a month since Dave's work. It's been crazy, right? It's nuts. But, uh, but anyway, Len, who's our student today? Our student is Trey Martin from East Tennessee State University. They are the Cougars. Their mascot is the Cougars, if the you're Cougs. interested in East Tennessee State University. Nope, I think I just made that one up too. Random one. What's our uh, mascot? Buccaneers. The Buccaneers. Yeah. Go Bucks. Box. I feel like I kind of knew that. Mike, yeah. rumor has it, you have some random information for us this episode. What do you got for us? For those of you who don't know, uh, when I was a student here approximately two and a half years ago, I was gifted the nickname of Skid. I've always had a little bit of, um, I don't know what the right word is, but I, I haven't really Trepidation? Loved, I don't even know what the word means, yeah. but it sounds like it would fit. I had some trepidation towards the nickname. Caused a lot of anxiety. It did cause a lot of anxiety. I couldn't sleep very well when people were calling me that name at work. And, uh, <laughs> So I did some research, and uh, a friend of mine actually told me that the notorious neighborhood in Los Angeles, Skid Row, was named after Skid Road, which is in Seattle, but there was a miscommunication when they were naming uh, the neighborhood in Los Angeles, and the reporter thought instead of Road, he heard Row, and they named it Skid Row, and we know the rest is history, and that's how I ended up with the nickname. That is amazing. That and the fact that your last name sounds like Skid. It sounds nothing like Skid. It's Skidudo. <laughs> Scud. Just say it fast. Skidudo. Skidudo. We don't want to call him Scud. Scud's weird. Skid? Cool. I'm not a fan of anything Skid. Well, so, <laughs> so we, know. we haven't called him that in a while. But you know what? This is just a snapshot in a day in the life of Mike Skidudo, right? He's got a lot of great information like this. And I think we learn a lot every day. Mm-hmm. Let's I keep would say so. let's keep learning today, Dr. Dre. What do we have? <laughs> what do we have for a good? Oh, doc, I call him Dr. Dre. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Dre. Dr. Dr. Dre. <laughs> Take it away, buddy. Sue from Nashville. Are there any different specific precautions for using Achilles allograft for ACL reconstruction? An Achilles allograft for ACL reconstruction. Good question. Uh, geez, we can we can start with just allografts. I don't know <laughs> if you have a specific answer for Achilles. I uh, guess, right? Yeah, like pretty commonly used if they use an allograph. But I guess I guess we I guess we can compare we allografts yeah. and then compare a uh, bone right. versus an Achilles again. But I'd let, say less what, pain and go as fast as possible, right? I mean, that's what they sell it on. No, I'm kidding. And just get after it. So, Completely all right, let, Len, let's take a step <laughs> back. We'll let Lenny start and probably end this question. This, this could be just be easy, but uh, but so Lenny, and your swimmers? No, I'm just kidding. And uh, uh, what what's the difference with allograph? Right. An autograph. Right. Like, so obviously autograft is your tissue, allograft is a dead person, a cadaver, right? Cadaver tissue, right. Like, how does your rehab approach just with an allograft with ACL? What do you think differently? If I have an allograft patient come in who had an allograft in the knee, I give it to the student because I don't feel like dealing with that issue long term. Um, no, still kidding. <laughs> Dr. Trey. Dr. Trey. Now, I haven't treated allograft, many allografts in a long time just because the docs don't really do them, but... It sounds like your docs in Nashville are still doing them, and you're seeing them a bunch, so you're asking the question. Um, I would go pretty slowly with them. The research is not that good um, on allografts. Now, that's to say that there's maybe a place for that older you know, person who still does some kind of cutting and maybe uh, skiing, something like that. Maybe the, I don't, I don't even want to say 45 because I'm 45, and I would never take an allograft at this age, but maybe the 50-plus who still is active and wants a stable knee, I would probably go potentially that direction. But the research says that the that the retail rates are higher, the laxity in the knee is a little bit more 
Um, and it's just, it's a risk that I'm not willing to, to give my patients. So I educate, if the doc is talking allograft, I'm gonna educate on some of those risks and make sure that we try to steer them potentially in a different direction. We'll get a second opinion and maybe go to a doc that we know would do an autograft, because I think autograft or using your own tissue is the best way to go, uh, no doubt, statistically in the research. Like, that's a no-brainer. Now, yeah, I will say that, I know, I will say that they are starting to show that if you don't irradiate some of the allografts and you don't change the property of the collagen, then they're, they're trying to show that the results are the same um, with an autograft, but you're now you're dealing with cadaver material that has not necessarily been, um, I guess, you know, treated to potentially pass on, uh, you know, pathogens. So do you want to take that risk? So I think there's a lot of, a lot of things to think about, but I'm just, I'm not an, an allograft fan, so I would go really slowly to allow graft incorporation. All right, so what, what, what's the science show the si the with, si with allografts? With allografts, it takes a long time for that graft to incorporate. So besides the higher retail rates and um, the laxity, it takes a lot longer for that cadaver tissue to incorporate in that person's knee. And uh, I don't know if we know 100%, but there are some studies that show, you know, two plus years for that person's knee to become fully incorporated with that graft. So if we're trying to get people back in nine months and the graft is not anywhere close to incorporated into that knee, you start risking you know, ex excessive strain on the graft, maybe stretching of the graft. And I've seen a ton of people, not just a couple people, a ton of people where the graft is completely dissolved within the body, where the body sees it as a, an external you know, threat to the knee and will actually chew away at the graft where they'll have an instability episode They'll go in, do an MRI, and then will be no remnants of that graft God. remaining God. in that knee after the reconstruction. So again, that's another risk that I, it's probably a low percentage, but I've seen a decent amount where it's in my head and I just don't want to deal with that. So there, there's definitely been reports of disease transmission. I'm sure that's pretty low, but that's definitely been out there. Yeah, risk. There, there's, we, I, I think we've all seen, I don't know if you guys have seen it, you know, but I know we've seen, and we've, we, we go to enough of these huge conferences that we talk to all these other doctors, that it, you do have second look arthroscopies down the road and the thing's gone, mm. that it's enough in there. But I think, the, again, the science that Lenny's showing us is, is they have higher recurrent instability rates, mm -hmm. they have higher laxity down the road, right? So there's there are differences with allograft, right? Yeah. So we, we have that. So now the question is, because that was what the question was, is like from the beginning, is well, what do we do different? Right. Well, because it takes so long, because that, I think we, we go slower. We go slower with range of motion. We go slower with their aggressive loading. We go slower with their return to sport activities. We go slower with their running. We go slower with their aggressiveness, and we go slower with their return to play, actual, when we let them get back there. Yeah. So we go slower with everything. So what do we do different? We go slower. And I think we go slower. And the, I would say we go slower, and I would say the other thing I do is I, I, we feel them a lot, and we gauge right. how fast yeah. we're going by, how loose they <coughs> feel. And man, I don't know, I think most allografts we feel feel loose. Yeah. They just don't feel good in my hands. Don't feel good. And the, probably one of the other thing that I see is a lot of people have an autograft, so they'll have a patella tendon or a hamstring tendon or a quad tendon, and then if they fail, they, they re-tear that, well then the obvious next choice is just do an allograft, so do the cadaver, and then you are just setting that person up for complete failure, because they've already torn it once. Even if they didn't have a second, the second surgery wasn't an allograft, they still have a higher chance of re-tearing just by having that first ACL tear. Now you're putting an allograft in, so now you're really raising the stakes up to re-tear it for that second time. And I don't know, I just, I, there are very, very, very few instances where I'll say I think an allograft is for you. Like I said, maybe that 50 plus, that, that 60 plus that still skis and is active, which is a big population. Um, but even then, I would educate on a hamstring autograft and say that, you know, if you really want to be active for another 10, 15 years, then maybe a hamstring is the way to go and not do the allograft and really, really educate on the benefits of both. You know? I, I honestly don't know what I would do right now. <laughs> like, at myself, like, as a, you know, I would, like, up until like a year or two ago, I was like always the patellar tendon. Mm autograph now i don't know there's there's other options maybe i'm getting older and more scared one thing we'll say and i don't have a ton more to add is that i used to see a lot of allografts uh, when i was out in denver and they're giving them to professional athletes and all the like so it was still popular out there yeah. uh, they tend to get better faster they tend to right. look better yeah so i think it's gonna be challenging to hold these guys back yeah. because right. we do know the long-term outcomes yeah this no doubt because they're not taking their own tissue so if you have a patella tendon autograph they're taking a piece of the tibia of the middle third of your patella tendon and a piece of your patella, they're taking a piece of your kneecap, that's painful. 
if they're just putting an allograft in or a cadaver graft, all they have to do is make the, the hole and put the graft in. There's, there's no Way there's better. no dissection. There's very le lot less dissection of tissue. Even a hamstring graft, that's pretty painful in our ACLs and our Tommy Johns. If they take that small incision and take that hamstring graft out and make that the ACL, that's a pretty painful aspect of the surgery as well. Yeah. So if there's less pain and maybe less swelling and people are feeling better quicker, yeah, then Dan, great point that people are gonna wanna go faster and sometimes docs will say, let's go at it, we can do this auto, we can do this allograft because we can get you back feeling good a lot quicker and I think that's why we're also seeing higher retail rates because of this yeah, like, false information that's being put out there to the people that you can go faster. Right, all right, so let's summarize everything. What would we do different? That's the real question. Range of motion, probably wouldn't push into hyperextension probably wouldn't push into deep flexion very early, or maybe even at all down the road, right? Correct me if anyone thinks differently, I'm jump in, I'm just gonna go off the top of my head. That would be one of the range of motion, going slower with terminal hyperextension and flexion, right? Weight bearing status, same, no problem, right? Exercises at the beginning, same, no problem. I don't think I would do anything different. I think the, the transition to start running maybe a little slower, maybe two to four weeks slower than an uh, autograph I would probably do, right? What do you think? But then when we get to running, cutting, jumping, I think I'm like months behind. Yep. I think now you got to show me that you have amazing strength, you have amazing control, right? And that you don't have extra lashing. Yeah, and you have a good end point, like right. you know, have a... Right, and then if they do, if they if they have too much laxity, you just have to go harder and harder with like yeah. making sure they're strong and they're stable with, with right. all their things, and then delay it down the road. Um, you know, but you, you definitely get trickier. So to, to get to big answer to the question, it's definitely slower, even though the person's probably going to feel better faster. And then the key for you as the PT is communicating this stuff in a safe and friendly way that the person's not going to freak out that oh I had an allograft my knee's feeling loose, why are you checking, why are you doing this every time I come in? You know what I mean? Because yeah. you can, could get a little obsessive for them, like, is it any looser? You feel, does it feel looser? So be cautious, you know what I mean? Like, like hey, is, hey, student, student. Yeah, every come feel this. Come feel this. I feel another millimeter, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, pump yeah. the brakes with how you're educating the patient, but I would still keep an eye on that in, in a nice way, politely way, and somehow word it that, you yeah. just keep an eye on things, because it can happen after ACLs, you know, it just, we, yeah. we probably have like one or two clients at a time where we like, we're working with them after their allograft and they feel loose to us. And in our head, we're just like, oh. <laughs> and, and, you know, and then like, you know, a, a few of them have re-torn, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, we talk about them. They leave and you're like, ugh, that was super loose. They're getting super loose. So all you can do is you can just slow down. If they say why, you say like, well, I mean, we gotta, you know, we gotta, you have to get stronger. Right, so I, you know, return to play is always like a big topic with ACLs. If you have an allograft, I think you have to be even closer to like like symmetrical with your strength and range. I don't want eighty percent. I want that even higher, and stuff like that. So, um, so good, good overview of allografts. That's definitely we what we you know what we do different. I think there is a big difference between them. So this is a big topic. We can keep going for hours on this, but I think that's a good start right there for you at least to know and explore it. Now I think your next step is maybe kind of go through the research and look at some of these studies that compare the two so you can get that information you know, yourself. And you can know like, hey, in these studies it says that you know, the percentage of recurrent instability is this. Because that's good information for you to understand as a clinician too, so, okay? Uh, great question, head to MikeReynolds.com, click on that podcast link if you have more questions like that, and we'll be happy to answer away. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next episode.